Lake Placid turns 25 today. It was released July 16th, 1999. Perhaps the best crocodile movie ever made, starring Bill Pullman, Bridget Fonda, and Oliver Platt. Today we're gonna take a look back at Lake Placid on VHS. Welcome back to the Ecto Violence channel. My name is Alec. I saw Lake Placid as a kid, maybe once, and I didn't revisit it again till adulthood. Since then, it's been in heavy rotation. All these animal movies like this, especially from the late 90s, like Deep Blue Sea, Anaconda, Python, and Komodo, obviously most of these are diet jaws. I've actually already reviewed Anaconda on VHS, you can check that out here. Later this month I'll be doing Deep Blue Sea for its 25th anniversary. That's right, Lake Placid and Deep Blue Sea came out within two weeks of each other in the summer of 1999. So let's throw this tape in and talk about this movie. First up, there's a couple trailers. Some of these movies I, I don't even really remember. So there's The Beach, obviously, the Leonardo a DiCaprio movie. Entrapment, I remember those two. A Midsummer Night's Dream, I remember hearing about but never actually seeing, and that looks, looks wacky to me. Broke Down Palace, Best Laid Plan, and then there's one for Fight Club, which is fun. And the BBC presents Walking with Dinosaurs. These dinosaurs look like trash. And last up is a little uh, trailer for Ally McBeal. Sign of the times right there. And let's start with the positives for this movie, all right? This movie's directed by Steve Miner. If you're a horror fan, you will recognize that name. This is the guy that directed Friday the 13th Part 2, Friday the 13th Part 3, Halloween H2O, and of those movies, I really like Part 3 and H2O. The cast, Bridget Fonda plays a paleontologist, which is always fun. You get a little bit of Jurassic Park meets Jaws here. This is very much a silly B-movie though, and it knows it is. Now it's not a parody movie or anything, but it knows what type of movie it is and it executes it perfectly. On the front of the VHS, it even says, you'll spend as much time laughing as you do screaming. It's a quote from David Poland for TNTRoughCut.com. Bridget Fonda's character is very interesting in this movie. She's kind of annoying at times because she's just complaining about things that, I mean, everybody would complain about, but it's just like they're giving it a lot of screen time is all. And it's so that the other characters have something to bicker with over her, like her hate of mosquitoes. And she's like, well, everybody hates mosquitoes, you know, like Bill Pullman, and I'm a huge Bill Pullman fan. Independence Day, Spaceballs, Lost Highway, Lake Placid. Those are my core Bill Pullman flicks. And he works for the fish and game in this. And obviously he becomes the new love interest for Bridget Fonda's character, which is fine. It works out great. They don't spend an, a crazy amount of time like developing that relationship or anything. You just see hints of it here and there. Brendan Gleeson, who if you don't watch a lot of movies, you'll at least recognize as Mad-Eye Moody from the Harry Potter movies. He's the sheriff. He's kind of grumpy and he is very confrontational especially with Oliver Platt's character. He's got range because in this, he's hilarious. He's, he's just, he's really quirky and he sort of worships cro crocodiles. He thinks they're like godlike creatures. He doesn't want to kill them. He's like, ooh, we got to capture this bad boy. This is God right here, basically. And the last main addition to this cast that absolutely blows it out of the park is Betty White. Do you know how your husband died? Oh, yes. I killed him. I've actually brought up Betty White in Lake Placid quite a few times on my channel because it's just such an iconic role. When I watch X, I think about this movie every time. Same thing with Pearl. Both of those movies make me think back to Lake Placid. Which, by the way, the lake isn't even called Lake Placid in this movie. They, even, they mention that at one point, too. He says, What's with the water? It's so black. There's no waves or anything. Well, they wanted to call it Lake Placid, but somebody said that name was taken. Let's talk about some of the effects, and I gotta warn you, some of these effects aren't great, especially if you're gonna go and watch this movie on high def on, you know, some streaming service or something. I watched this on VHS on maybe a 14-inch CRT, and I gotta say, the effects actually really worked for me on that. The guy being pulled out as half a corpse, I remember always looking terrible, but on VHS, it just blended so well, it just was like, holy shit, that's a, that's a half a guy's corpse right there, yep. The crocodile. There was a huge animatronic crocodile that Stan Winston, yes, Stan Winston from Jurassic Park, Aliens, I mean, fucking everything you've ever loved, worked on the crocodile effects for this movie, at least the practical side. Now, there's plenty of CGI too, but I think there's less than four minutes of screen time of the crocodile in this movie. But what they put together for this movie, it 100% works. When it switches to CGI, during this time when all these movies were coming out, it is a little rougher, surely. But at least they don't do as many weird things as Anaconda. Anaconda, some of the CGI shots, you're just like, holy crap, what am I looking at? 
In this one, you're just like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little CGI looking, but it's not like wonky CGI. It's just like aged CGI, you know? And now, here's a compilation of Betty White's funniest lines in this movie. Finally, I just gave in. And I hit him on the head with a skillet, then buried him under the bulkhead. Well, dig him up if you don't believe me, Sherlock. You old cocksuckers! I knew it first, I just didn't want to say it. I'm rooting for the crocodile. I hope he swallows your friends whole. You might want to arrest me for that, too. Is that a crime to wish the chewing of law enforcement? Not sure, man. Cute little buttons. Oh, oh. oh mommy loves you. Come on, get your supper. And now let's talk about some of the negatives. So for some people, this movie is going to be trash. It's not going to be watchable. In fact, I think the Rotten Tomatoes ratings on this are pretty bad. The audience liked it even less than the critics, who still were below 50%. Another man's garbage is another man's gold, okay? And now, reading the back of this, I figure out why that Ally McBeal trailer's on there. A thriller laced with an underlying sense of humor, Lake Placid was written and produced by David E. Kelly, the creator of TV's Ally McBeal. Okay, I get it. So obviously, as I mentioned before, some of the CGI is a little, like, dated, and it takes you out of it a little bit, because you're noticing that how ridiculous this is. And if you're not a fan of these movies that are kind of cheesy B-movies, that are taking themselves seriously, but not too seriously. Like, you really have to enjoy those types of movies, and if you do, this movie might be a 5 out of 5. At only 82 minutes, this movie does not overstay its welcome, either. This movie's an hour and 22 minutes long. That's nothing! It gets in, it gets out. I highly recommend checking it out for the 25th anniversary. Let's celebrate Lake Placid together. Before I give this movie a rating, why don't you go ahead and jump in the comments down below, let me know what you think of Lake Placid. And Lake Placid on VHS, uh, I'm gonna give it... Hmm, hmm, hmm... A three and a half out of five hearts. Because I love it. If you like this video, be sure to check out this one and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.